Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I wish you and your family a very happy new year, and may God bless you all. Last week I was on a vacation, so I was not able to upload the class. So this week I'll be uploading two of them. In today's class, we will be talking about the air navigation chapter, maps in the charts projection. As discussed earlier in my previous class, the, the shape of the earth can be considered as an oblate spheroid or an ellipsoid or to be more precise these days as a zeoid. So it means that the earth is flattened at the pole and it is bulging out at the equator as shown on the picture here. But uh, as far as my class is concerned today that I will be considering the earth as a spare now onto my globe. So why do we need a map or a chart? So when we fly, it is an aviator fly from one place to another, I need some representation of the earth. That representation of the earth is done in a form of a map or a chart. So when we try to represent the earth okay like the way it is here in this particular globe okay it is a three dimensional shape okay and this three dimensional shape a globe okay i cannot carry them in an aircraft okay so i need to convert this this three dimensional figure to a two dimensional figure that is nothing but your maps or on the chart so if you imagine if i need to project this or I need to convert this three-dimensional object to a two-dimensional object which is in the form of the maps and the chart okay the earth the shape of the earth or the shape of any land feature land mass or anything will be distorted as shown in the two pictures here on the left and the on to the right so there can never be an exact representation of the earth okay which is a three-dimensional figure onto a two-dimensional figure okay there will always be a distortion so in order to minimize the distortion we need to establish something known as the properties of an ideal map okay to minimize this distortion so if we talk about the properties of an ideal map on an ideal map the scale which is nothing but the distance which is represented on the chart divided by the distances which is onto the earth has to be correct and the constant. We will talk about the scale slightly later on and I should be able to extract the coordinates uh, very easily and angles in the bearing should be represented onto the should be as represented onto the earth. That means to say that if I draw a line on a map or the chart and the measure an angle, there is a track of an aircraft, it should be equal to that onto the earth. Then I need the shapes and the areas should be correctly represented. A rum line, which we all have discussed, should be represented as a straight line. And at the same time, the great circle should be represented as a straight line. And since I cannot have only one set of map I will require multiple maps so the adjacent side of these map should fit each other and I need a coverage which is worldwide so these are the some of the points which are ideal for a map or a chart so as I have discussed that a three-dimensional projection onto a two dimension can never be a perfect one. So therefore the distortion will happen. The distortion is primarily it happens on three things. There is the distances. If you have a look at this particular diagram where on the top is the let us say that assume earth and the, here on the bottom one is the chart. Here in the top one which is exactly onto the earth the meridians are converging with each other whereas if a chart is I say that okay I want the rum line to be a straight line or I want these uh, longitude okay parallel to each other so I need to stretch this out when I stretch this out the distances which are represented onto the earth have been stretched out so the distance distortion is 
happening in this particular chart. Similarly, as far as the area is concerned, if you compare the two figures, in the second figure, which is the bottom one, the areas has been stretched. Similarly, if the areas are stretched, then the shapes okay, have been distorted. Okay, so that means to say that if I want to measure a direction in this particular map, okay, the direction can no longer be a correct one. So our idea is to minimize and utilize it in the air navigation. So as far as the aviators are concerned, primary thing which I require or I need is that the bearings and the distances should be represented okay, correctly and should be easily measurable. And the path to be flown should be represented as a straight line so generally we would prefer to fly a great circular path okay or sometimes we may prefer to fly a rum line so therefore this path to be flown by the aircraft should be represented as a straight line on a map or a chart so if i want to fix a position during my flight using a radio navigational aids i need to plot that radio navigational aids bearing so when i plot these bearings so i should be able to plot them easily on a map or a chart so these are the basic three properties which an aviator requires out of a map or a chart so after having discussed the maps of the chart these maps and the charts can be classified depending upon their projection depending upon the project point of projection so we will talk about the classification depending upon their projection. The first kind of a map or a chart, okay, can be a perspective projection. A perspective projections are obtained by directly projecting the graticule of the reduced earth from a point onto a plane surface or a developable surface. So let me take this uh, paper and consider that it is a plane or a developable, developable surface. So I take this globe here place this paper on top of the globe and put a light at the center of the earth then the image of these pictures or the graticles will be projected onto this particular paper so this kind of a projection is known as a perspective projection whereas in a non prospect perspective projection okay non perspective projection should be obtained by modifying a perspective projection so here in this, I already got the perspective projection. I need to modify this perspective projection in order to get a non-perspective projection by using some mathematical formula in order to suit our usage. In order to, I repeat, in order to suit our usages. Okay, so that kind of a projection, okay, are known as the non-perspective projection. So when I say the developable surfaces, the developable surfaces can be a plane. Okay, can be a, a cylinder or can also be a cone. We will have a look, okay, slightly later. So, they can be divided depending upon the developable surfaces used. A conical projection, okay, a conical projection are perspective or non-perspective projection onto a cone. So, let us make a cone here like this. I make a cone here. Okay, now this earth or the okay has been wrapped around this cone, and the uh, light is kept at a suitable place. We will talk about that. Okay, and uh, the image of this earth will be projected onto this particular paper. So that kind of a projection is known as a conical projection. Okay, as far as the cylindrical projection are concerned, I will make this is in the form of a cylinder here wrap around this globe okay and uh, project these images of the graticles and the shapes of the earth okay into this particular cylinder then that kind of projection is known known as the cylindrical projection as far as the azimuthal projections are concerned okay i place it a flat or a plain sheet of paper here at any point onto the sphere and the project okay and the put a light okay depending upon the kind of a projection we want into the center or in the diametrically opposite position okay that kind of a projection is known as the azimuthal projection the common example of a conical projection is lambert's and that of a cylindrical projection is mercator and that of a azimuthal projection is the 
PSP that is a polar stereographic projection. So that as we have discussed earlier, the Earth or the globe which we are talking about, this particular globe which I was mentioning in the maps and third terminology is known as the reduced Earth. So that Earth which is a big one has to be reduced in a <coughs> particular order. Okay, that particular shape of the earth okay is known as a reducer so in this particular cone the reducer is wrapped around and the light is projected from a suitable position depending upon the type of projection we need similarly this is the second diagram okay, which is in blue color so the cylindrical projection and the third diagram onto the right which is shown in the yellow color represents an azimuthal projection so which when cut open Okay, the cone is cut open and I get a figure somewhat like this. So this will be the shape of my map or the chart. Similarly, the shape of a map of the chart of a cylindrical projection after having cut will be somewhat like this blue color and that of an azimuthal projection will be like this, which is shown in a yellow color. Similarly, as we were talking about the depending upon the developable surfaces now depending upon the where you keep the light okay with which you are projecting the map or the chart can be classified under the following okay so if the source of light is kept at infinity if i keep this source of light at infinity each and every rays coming towards this reduced earth will can be considered or assume as a parallel to each other so this kind of a projection is known as a orthographic projection and if you put the source of the light as in the second figure which is in the middle figure okay in the center of the earth and the project it okay then that kind of a projection is known as a mnemonic projection and uh, if you keep the source of the light at the diametrically opposite okay place onto the earth okay where okay then that kind of a projection is known as a stereographic position Pro correction stereographic projection so now as we were discussing that i can i need to wrap around this earth in with this paper on which the map or the chart has to be developed so i cannot wrap this big earth on a piece of paper so therefore i need to reduce this earth with a particular scale okay so now let us assume that this particular globe which i have in my hand is a reduced earth and uh, there has to be a comparison or some relation established between this particular globe and uh, the dead of the earth Okay, by how many much time this particular earth which I have in my hand, the globe which is in my hand, has been reduced with respect to the original earth is considered as a scale of the projection. I repeat the scale of the projection. So the scale of the projection is nothing but the scale of the reduced earth, wherein the length of the reduced earth, okay. It is the ratio between the length of the reduced earth with that of the actual distances onto the earth. So if I say that this particular here is 15 degrees meridian, okay, here at equator, okay, the 15 into 60, okay, 60 minutes, okay, 6 5 is 30, 3 1 3, 90. So therefore, it will represent or one particular minute will represent one nautical mile in this on the original earth but however here in this particular it is in terms of a minuscule distances so like let us say that if one centimeter one centimeter onto this particular globe represents 50 centimeter onto the actual earth that ratio that is one centimeter upon 50 centimeters on the earth this particular ratio is known as a scale of the projection or scale of the reduced earth Let's move on further. So, as we have seen earlier, okay, I have established the scale of this reduced earth or the scale of the my projection. But however, if you have a look at this particular diagram, okay, if I put the source of the light here at this particular point onto the diagram where the it is given in the yellow color, okay, the light is kindly follow my mouse, please, coming out and projecting this particular image here at the 
this point similarly this particular image here okay at this point so what is happening is the i go away from the this particular line okay the light is gonna project this particular image away from the center okay far from the center so what i can say that the image which i am gonna be obtaining is an expanded form Okay, it is expanded. So in this case, we can, we call it as the scale is expanding. But whereas if I cut, assume that I have cut the earth in the second images here and the place a paper in this and the here and the project it from a light which is at the infinity. So in this particular case, this particular arc is going to be projected onto this particular small form. So in some of the cases, the scale may be contracting so even if i use a same amount of a map okay the same the same map okay at some point of this depending upon where it is the scale may be exactly correct or the scale may be e expanding here in the first figure if i assume this point which is vertically above okay at the point where the paper is placed at this particular place there will be no expansion or no contraction so i can consider that the scale is correct at this place but however as i go away from the point of contact at this the scale will slowly expand okay similarly in some cases this if i put the light okay from directing from here and another light directing from here then in this case the scale may be contracting so by how much a scale is contracting or expanding it is expressed by something known as the scale factor the scale factor is a factor by which the specified scale is expanding or contracting so in that particular example wherein okay as i go away from this the scale is expanding so the scale factor at any point on a chart or a map can be expressed as a scale at a okay upon the scale of the reduced r so scale at a is the distance which i measured on a particular area okay this is let us say that this is i measure at this particular area i will have a scale at this particular point and the, what was my original scale of the reduced earth if i put a ratio of that this particular ratio is known as the scale factor at a so which shows that okay by how much it is expanding or contracting so now finally when we come when we talk about the scale okay we have often talked about the scale and scale has to be defined or it is defined as a ratio of the chart length and the, the the earth length so as i was saying that at some particular point the scale will be correct on this particular map and in most of the areas the scale is not going to be correct so it will either expand or it will either contract so therefore this particular distance one centimeter at this particular place okay look at the chart will represent certain amount of distance onto the earth which may be different from the at this place isn't it so a scale finally at a particular point is that okay is that the ratio between the distance which is onto the chart upon the distance onto the earth okay that is chart line upon the earth line so this is known as a scale in my next class i will be talking more about this scale and the numerical which are based on the scale okay in my next class so this scale is expressed in three ways the first is that in a representative fraction wherein it says that the first figure says that one is to five lakhs okay one is to okay five lakhs or five hundred thousand okay in this case what it says is that okay one centimeter for example one unit or maybe one centimeter or one inches or anything okay one unit on to the chart is equal to 500,000 or 5 lakh units onto the earth that means that if i assume that one centimeter onto the earth or oh sorry one centimeter onto the chart will represent okay 500,000 centimeters onto the actual earth so second way of uh, explaining or representing is in a plain statement where it says that okay one centimeter is equal to one kilometer or two centimeter is equal to one one kilometer onto the earth okay in the zepson chart okay you will find this kind of presentation wherein it says that one inch is equal to 40 nautical miles 
the third way of representing or denoting the scale is in terms of a graduated scale you will find it generally in the atlas okay or in your school or in your college uh, maps wherein it says that a distance which is from 0 to 5 which is will be equivalent into 5 kilometers or 5 nautical miles on a particular map on a earth okay so similarly this is the first one is a constant scale where the scale is a constant where we may have a variable scale wherein as i was explaining that okay the x scale was expanding from the origin so in this case as the scale expands okay at a particular point onto the chart or in a particular line onto the chart or in a particular parallel of latitude the scale has expanded in that case the expansion is gradual and it is not constant so therefore the scale may be represented like this which is given in this particular diagram so uh in today's class, what we have discussed is the type of projection. In my next class, as I was talking about the scale, okay, we will do some numerical on scale and we will talk about some common chart which are used in the aviation, okay, which we call it as a Mercata, Lambert and the PSP and their properties, okay, and how the graticles and how the rum line and the great circle look like in those charts. There is Marketer, Lambert and the PSP. With this, I finished for today. Thank you.